Um, I'm Libby. Um, I'm here today to talk about whether smart people are somehow inherently bad at humaning, a term coined by uh, Gail. Um, so I work in the sports forecasting industry. Um, until relatively recently, I was much more of a statistician than I was a programmer. Um, applying statistics to sports has certain difficulties involved, um, and one of these is sampling bias. Um, in traditional st statistical settings, um, you technically sort of design experiments, make sure your samples are representative, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, this isn't so much possible in sports statistics because um, you're relying on observational data. Um, this means that you have to be very, very aware of the types of sampling bias you might come up against just because you're not creating your own samples. Um, it may not surprise you to learn that I love graphs. <laughs> Um, so this is, the axes are taken from Gail's talk yesterday. Um, on one axis we have computing skills, which sort of represents your technical skills, using computers, etc. Um, on the other axis we have humaning skills. Um, so things like empathy, communication, teamwork, also very important. Um, this graph got me thinking. I think it's often believed that people who are higher on the computing axis tend to be lower on the humaning axis. The example that stands out most to me is people talking about poor experiences that they have with teachers teaching environments. Um, things like the teacher was just too smart to be able to teach. They know their subject so well that they've forgotten how to teach it. This implies a kind of causal relationship, kind of the idea that as more and more technical knowledge fills your brain, some of the bits in charge of understanding the perspective of others just fall out. If this were true, you'd kind of have a trend that looks a bit like this. I've made it quite a sharp trend, so there's no one in the world who's uh, any good at both computing and humaning, which I think we know isn't true. But <laughs> I propose instead that you might be able to see this trend without it actually being the case. Um, so instead, everyone's randomly scattered on these axes. Um, and the reason for this is because of a type of sampling bias. As Gail actually mentioned in her own session, as if you're sort of hiring for a company, um, you're sort of looking for people who are good at a mixture of both of these. Um, but you'll, you'll take a bit of a trade-off. You might take someone who's a, a bit worse at humaning in exchange for being a bit better at computing and so on. So you end up with a cut-off line a little bit like this. Um, so if you, say, work, you're, you're above this line. And most of the people you interact with are also above this line. So your sample that you're looking at, of the people that you can see, starts looking a lot like this. Um, and this looks like it has negative correlation. Um, that's because it does. <laughs> so gem technically, it's true. Of the people you interact with, it could, it could be true that generally the people who are better at computing are worse at humaning. However, the important thing is that this, in this case, it isn't a causal relationship. It's due to who you tend to see in your day-to-day -day life. Um, this phenomenon is known as Berkson's paradox. Um, I've put a link up there in case anyone's interested in it. Um, it also explains some other interesting observations, like why good books seem to make bad movies. Um, and I think that the, the thing here is, why is this important? Why is this relevant? Um, I think, for one, if this is a causal relationship, it's quite a sad situation. I'm quite afraid of public speaking. I'd put that on the human scale. As I'm standing here getting better, hopefully, at public speaking, everything I've, I've learned about C++ in my uh, brief time as a programmer is slowly disappearing from my brain. <laughs> Although I will say, if yesterday's panel on the future of the language is to be believed, that might not be a bad thing. <laughs> In addition, if we believe that this relationship is causal, this will affect our behavior. What sort of skills we might choose to develop, um, where we might focus our time. I think it's important to know that we can do both. It's not an either or. Thank you for listening. <laughs>